In this video, we cover the need for secondary storage and computers. We also make sure you know the main characteristics, purposes, suitability, and understand the principles of operation of hard disks, optical disks, and solid state disks. So let's start by considering the three main types of storage before we look at why we need secondary storage. So we have primary storage, that's the RAM or ROM, registers and cache. Secondary storage holds the operating system, programs and data when they're not in use. And then, although not in the specification, we have what's called tertiary storage, used for backing up and archiving large amounts of data. So, why is there a need for secondary storage? Well, on the screen here, we have an abstraction. We see ROM in the top left, RAM in the bottom left, a CPU in the top right, and a hard drive in the bottom right. We also have a symbol in the middle of the screen that determines whether our computer currently has power and is turned on or is turned off. It's currently turned off. So when a computer first receives power and is turned on, the essential instructions on how to boot up have to be taken from the ROM because ROM is read only memory and it permanently holds the data inside it. Instructions from the ROM go to the CPU, which then tells the computer the operating system is on a secondary long term storage device such as a hard drive. That can be then loaded off the hard drive and part of the operating system placed into primary memory or RAM. Remember, the hard drive being secondary storage is non-volatile. It's also read and write. In the top left, ROM was non-volatile, but it was read only. We can't store stuff in it. We can't write stuff to it. It's predetermined at the factory setting. RAM can be written to, but it's volatile and loses all the information when the computer is turned off. Our secondary storage is then the only place on the computer that is non-volatile and is readable and writable. We have three main types of devices we need to know about for the exam. Magnetic drives, solid state drives and optical drives. Drive means the device that reads and writes data from secondary storage. The first word is the media, what the data is actually stored on. And together we have the label for the three types of secondary storage that we need to know about. So let's look at each one in turn. Let's start with optical storage. Optical storage uses a series of pits and lands which are etched into the surface of the optical device. If we zoomed in and magnified really far, you can actually see these little pits and lands etched in concentric circles around the optical device. A laser can then be bounced off the optical device as it's spinning and the interference that's caused can be read and interpreted as a digital signal, a one and a zero. They're cheap, lightweight and highly portable. But they have relatively slow access times and they can be pretty prone to scratches. Next we have magnetic storage devices. So as the name suggests, these literally encode the binary ones and zeros using magnetic clarity, north and south, onto the surface of a metal disc which can be magnetised. The distance between the read-write head, which we can see in the photo here, and the surface of the magnetic disk is minuscule. You can see here in this abstraction in the bottom left that even a smoke particle is far bigger than the gap between the read-write head and the surface of the disk platter. Magnetic storage is very cheap and has a large capacity. But again, it has a slow access time. And because of all these very delicate and highly tuned moving parts, it's very fragile. If you drop a magnetic hard disk, you're likely to disrupt 
or damage one of the components inside it. Finally, we have solid state, or what's also often called flash storage. With this method of storage, data is stored using floating gate transistors. An oxide layer separates the floating gate from the control gate, and the presence or absence of an electric charge in the floating gate determines the binary states, ones and zeros. This charge trapping allows for the reliable storage of digital information in a compact and durable form. It has fast access times, but on the negative side, it's actually a relatively expensive form of storage, and it does have a limited number of read-write times. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. Why do we need secondary storage? And what are the main differences between hard disks, optical storage, and solid state storage? <laughs>